Hello, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets end of day analysis for uh, Tuesday, um, obviously end of day, uh, forecasting for Wednesday, the 3rd of May 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. Certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so European markets finished um, more or less uh, impressively higher. The German DAX breaking through that 12,500 level, CAC 40 above the 5,300 level. The FTSE as well certainly rising on the back of um, on the back of stronger earnings from BP, although it was played down or certainly weighed down by a weakness in oil and a, uh, a rally in uh, in the uh, in sterling and led by a stronger PMI data. Now talking about PMI data, European data, PMI data came more or less in line and uh, potentially above forecast, and hence the reason why we've seen a pop in the European equities. Even though we uh, have had uh, stronger inflation readings out of Europe, that certainly hasn't deterred uh, individuals to buy equities, given the fact that uh, Mr Draghi will be forced to uh, taper as well. So that certainly isn't uh, deterring investors at all. Uh, pretty impressive thus far. Either way, a strong weaker Chinese data overnight failed to uh, obviously trigger any risk aversion. A government shutdown as well failed to trigger any risk aversion thus far. The tax plan details certainly failed as well. Again, failed to deter any risk aversion as far. This market certainly is very, very impressive, especially with the Nasdaq as well. We have had um, earnings out from Apple now, uh, and uh, the earnings certainly were on the weaker side. Okay, and therefore we are looking at risk off session going into the European market open. Okay, now uh, let's see exactly where we stand. So again, like I said, PMI data came in more or less. Uh, stronger and uh, ahead of forecast, although weaker U.S. data certainly weighed on sentiment. We uh, economic data out of the U.S. certainly was on the weaker side. Let's see where we are technically speaking now. Like I said, we broke out on the weekly chart. Certainly a breakout here on the weekly chart, so you have to respect that daily chart at the moment on the German DAX. Now, is this a continuation pattern? That's the question. Like I said, the ECB certainly forced a taper. Uh, from my perspective, all the bullish news certainly is priced in now. Again, Apple earnings certainly will weigh on uh, on the actual German DAX, and we'll see exactly how the market responds there. But you can clearly see here, clear breakout on the German DAX. Impressive breakout on that as well, okay? Breaking above that key resistance that we've been holding at 12,480, okay? Looking at the 10-minute chart on the German DAX, we are certainly into a resistance at 12.510 with the pivot R3 uh, resistance, so an impressive resistance level. Now, I was expecting the bear flag to play out, and that certainly uh, didn't materialize. Okay. And again, like I said, that massive or major gap below certainly makes the DAX vulnerable at, at any occasion. Now, the uh, MDAX 50 certainly continues its uh, rally higher. On the weekly chart, you clearly see bullish. Daily chart certainly breaking out as well. Can we sustain that move? That's the question. Okay, certainly from my perspective, equity markets certainly seem to be priced to perfection. Okay, again, <clears throat> the tech all share, keep an eye for weakness given the fact that Apple certainly has uh, disappointed. Okay, now <clears throat> moving on to the French CAC here, folks. Okay, weekly chart of the French CAC. We're still stuck or meandering on that resistance zone. Whether we can turn south, that'll be the question. Daily chart at the moment, yes, we did push higher, but it wasn't exactly convincing, let's say that. Especially given the fact that we have the elections on Friday, on Sunday again. And there is a televised debate tonight, uh, Wednesday evening, between Le Pen and Mr. Macron. And we'll see exactly how that materialises, OK? A 10-minute chart at the moment. Into that pivot R3 resistance, like I said, an impressive breakout. Certainly expected that resistance level to hold, OK? Market certainly breaking out very, very impressively there. Again, like I said, you have that unfilled gap below at 5060. Markets are very, very complacent right now, okay? 10-minute chart, the FTSE, or should we start off with the weekly, or should we start off with the daily first of all? Daily chart, bullish engulfing candle on the back of, obviously, uh, BP earnings. Uh, but having said that, oil certainly is under pressure, or severely under pressure. The ring of oil, you can see that we actually touched the pivot low at uh, 47, and we're still vulnerable, okay? So again, given the fact that we've broken this key diagonal trend line, Oil remains very, very vulnerable here. Now, if we actually start to uh, go south, okay, then you are looking at $46. I'm very surprised that the uh, equity markets haven't even sold off yet, given the fact that we've got oil at this uh, at this level. Now, if oil breaks, then you are looking at 46 and then obviously it opens up 44 as well. And it certainly seems like the shale uh, is pumping at uh, 
yeah. at uh, unprecedented amounts, whilst OPEC is obviously arguing amongst themselves with regards to potential OPEC cuts. Now, if an OPEC cut can't stabilise the price of oil, what can? That's, that's what's scary, OK? We've had the OPEC cut, we've rallied up to 54, and obviously we've given everything back now, so what was the point of an OPEC cut at all, OK? So... Certainly hasn't helped. Hasn't put a floor on the price, and I can't see why they'd go, why they did get together now and attempt to cut output for what a few months, and then obviously it pushes up and then back right back down again. So, is there any benefit of that at all? I don't think there is. Okay, so it'd be interesting to see exactly how they respond now in terms of OPEC, and obviously the uh, there was news with regards to Russia as well. Certainly uh, news with regards to Russia agreeing to a potential six month uh, output cut, but again, what what is the actual intended side effect? We've seen the side effect, nothing at all. So um, is there any will to actually uh, continue with that? So that's a question, okay? And nevertheless, our, our job really isn't to forecast the price of oil. It's just basically to react. And obviously at present with oil prices uh, selling off sharply down to that 47.5 level, it certainly is risk aversion for uh, commodities. And therefore that, that obviously feeds through, feeds through into uh, equities as well, okay? In terms of the euro at the moment, we are at the lofty heights of 1.0935 again. Uh, hawkish uh, rhetoric, Mr. Draghi will ensue, given the fact that inflation numbers are certainly stronger, and also given the fact that PMI readings are stronger as well. There's nowhere to hide now. Okay, so Mr. Draghi certainly needs to start raising rates, and uh, from my perspective, that certainly is risk negative. Aussie at the moment, uh, Aussie and Kiwi, I think I'll leave for now. The Kiwi certainly has been uh, strong, given the fact that the global dairy auction and unemployment numbers certainly have come out stronger as well overnight. Okay, now let's see where the euro stocks uh, currently stands. Uh, let's go to the euro stocks here. Daily chart, bullish uh, bull flag certainly has been brewing for some time now. Whether or not we can sustain that move is a different question altogether. You do have double top resistance at uh, 3590. So again, that will be an area that I would certainly be more than happy to actually short. And I probably will be doing later on today. Okay, so you're into that gap fill resistance now on the 10-minute chart. So uh, 3580 certainly was gap filled. So that certainly is another opportunity for me to open up a initiate a short position on euro stocks itself. OK, right. OK, so for my understanding, uh, given the fact that uh, Apple earnings certainly weaker, that will be weighing on the market. Oil prices certainly submerging. That will be weighing on the market, too. In terms of uh, the FTSE and sterling, let's just quickly bring up sterling for you. Daily chart certainly still hovering around that gap fill level. So ever since we closed the gap, we've held. 60-minute chart, you can see ever since we have the stronger PMI readings in markets, so sterling certainly has rallied to 1.294. Uh, anyhow, move higher in uh, sterling and obviously it'll move lower in oil certainly is um, risk negative for the uh, FTSE 100. So again, all eyes on the FTSE. 10-minute chart, the S&P 500. Let's just have a look here and let's see exactly where we stand. Okay, so daily chart at the moment, really you've had the topping tail, bearish engulfing, dojis. The next potential move is down to 23.74. So all I can see at present really is a bearish uh, move on the S&P and therefore, uh, especially given the fact that Apple earnings certainly came in weaker as well, oil prices lower overnight, the bias remains bearish, okay? Right, I think that's a good summation of um, European equities now, folks. Uh, European equities, like I said, certainly, is, certainly are diverging from your US Equities, whether or not we can sustain a move higher is a totally different question altogether. Okay, for my understanding, uh, today or oh, Wednesday session, really, we'll, we'll see some uh, potential pullback. If we do need to see, if we want to see a sustained move in European equities lower, then we do need to break that previous resistance equal support at 12.375, and then we can go down to count fill. Otherwise, European equities certainly are in favour, and the German DAX certainly is uh, set to test 12.600 and potentially higher. Okay, on that note, please be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. And be sure to visit Trade Signaler and download the latest app. Goodbye.